In this video, we're going to look at solving linear inequalities. Specifically, we're going to consider double inequalities that have an x term on the left side, in the middle, and on the right. Now, throughout the video, we'll take a look at different variations of this problem, as well as the different types of solutions that result. So to begin, let's take a look at our first example. We are trying to find all of the values of x that make 3x minus 2 work out to a value that's less than or equal to 5x minus 4. And we're also trying to find the values of x that make 5x minus 4 work out to a value that's less than or equal to 3x plus 8. So in summary, we're trying to find all of the values of x that make 5x minus 4 fall between 3x minus 2 and 3x plus 8. This is one of the nice versions of this problem because as you notice, on the left side we have 3x, and on the right side we have the same thing, that is 3x. So it'll be very easy to eliminate this, uh, this term, 3x, from the left and the right, such that we'll only have x values in the middle, and then we can go on and, and solve from there for x very easily. So to do that, we need to take away 3x. Now if you take away 3x from, for example, the right side, it will eliminate that term but you also have to take it away from the other sides, that is the center and the left side. So doing that will leave us with negative two on the left, two x minus four in the middle, and eight on the right. So notice now we only have x's in the middle. This makes it really easy to solve. We'll go ahead and we'll isolate x. We'll do that first by adding four to each piece and that will give us two on the left, two x in the middle, and 12 on the right. And finally, we'll solve for x in the middle by dividing everything by two, which leaves us with one less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to six. And this is our answer. We are saying that if we use any x value between one and six, 3x minus 2 will end up being less than or equal to 5x minus 4, which will be less than or equal to 3x plus 8. If you'd like to, you can show this on the number line. 0 would be here, 1 would be here, and 6 perhaps here. And we are simply saying that we need to choose values of x that are between 1 and 6 inclusive. And that's it. Let's move on to example number 2. Now in this example, we don't have the case where the value of x on the left side is the same on the right. So we can't do what we did in the last problem, which is just simply subtract off that x term. The reason is because if you did so, say for example you tried to eliminate the 2x on the left by subtracting 2x, you would also have to do that on the right, and in the middle too. But on the right side, you'd have 5x minus 2x, that's 3x notice there's still an x term on the right side. So to eliminate that, you might say, well, now I'll subtract 3x, but then you'd end up with a negative 3x on the left side. So we have to take a different approach. And the way we'll do it is we'll look at this double inequality as two separate inequalities. We'll begin by just considering the first part that says 2x plus 13 has to be less than 4x plus 3. So I'll write that out, 2x plus 13 has to be less than 4x plus 3. But at the same time, you need 4x plus 3 to work out to something less than 5x minus 4. So 4x plus 3 has to be less than 5x minus 4. Now you need both of these conditions to be met. That is, you need 2x plus 13 to be less than 4x plus 3, and you also need 4x plus 3 to be less than 5x minus 4. So let's solve these separately and see what we can do with the result. Starting with the, the left inequality here, 2x plus 13 is less than 4x plus 3. We'll go ahead and solve for x like we normally do with linear inequalities, and I will put the x's on the left in this case. So we'll end up with 2x minus 4x. Notice you could do it with the x's on the right too. It works just fine that way. And we'll have three minus 13 on the right. Two x take away four x is negative two x, and three minus 13 is negative 10. To get rid of the negative two coefficient on x here, we will divide by negative two, but remember, 
when you divide by a negative with an inequality, you have to switch the direction of that inequality. So we'll divide by negative two, switching it to a greater than sign, so we get x has to be greater than five. Moving over to the right inequality, 4x plus 3 is less than 5x minus 4. Again, we'll go ahead and solve with the x's on the left side, so we'll have 4x minus 5x is less than negative 4 minus 3. 4x minus 5x is negative 1x, or simply negative x, and we have a negative 7 on the right. We'll solve for x by dividing through by negative one, but you are dividing by a negative, so make sure you switch the inequality. In this case, it becomes a greater than sign, and we'll get negative seven over negative one, which is simply x is greater than seven. So on the left, we found that x has to be greater than five. On the right, we found that x has to be greater than seven. But keep in mind, we need both of these conditions to be met. Right? We need x greater than five, and we need x greater than seven. So let's take a trip down to the number line here and see what's actually happening. The numbers we're dealing with that are important here are five and seven. So we said that we have to have x values greater than five, no problem, not including five, so I'll do an open circle, and we need everything greater than five. So we're looking at this here. But we also have to have x values greater than seven. So not including seven, but must be greater than. Now you need both of these conditions to be met. So we are going to look for the area on this number line where you have x values that are both greater than five and greater than seven. And that would be everything from here on. Okay, so pretty much where the graphs overlap, or the, the arrows overlap. That is to say, we are looking for all x values that are greater than seven those ones are automatically also greater than five. So we can sum it up here by saying, therefore, we need x to be greater than seven. And that is the final answer. Let's move on to our third example. In example number three, we have the situation similar to that in example two. The value of x on the left and on the right side of the double inequality are different. We have a 5x and a 6x. So let's take the same approach we did in example number two and split this into two separate linear inequalities. So we need 5x plus 12 to be less than 3x plus 4. And simultaneously, we need 3x plus 4 to be less than 6x plus 25. And we'll solve these individually. On the left, we end up solving for x. We'll put x on the left side of the inequality. We get 5x minus 3x is less than 4 minus 12. That is to say 2x is less than negative 8. And that leads us to see that, oops, we have x less than negative 4 if you divide by 2. And on the other side, we have 3x minus 6x is going to be less than 25 minus 4. And that gives us negative 3x is less than 21. Dividing through by negative 3, note we have to switch the inequality because we're dividing by a negative, we get 21 divided by negative 3, which is negative 7. And we need both of these conditions to be met. x has to be less than negative 4, and x has to be greater than negative 7. So to interpret these results, again, let's go to the number line. We have zero on the number line, and the other important numbers are negative four and negative seven. So our first piece here tells us that we have to deal with x values that are less than negative four. No problem, there's negative four. We want everything less than that. The other piece of this inequality says that we have to have x values greater than negative seven. So here's negative seven and we want everything greater than that. Now once again, we need both conditions to be met. We need the values of x that are less than negative four, but also greater than negative seven. So which values are these? Well, just look where the arrows overlap. Everything from negative seven to negative four, not including those, is where we have both conditions being met. So we can sum it up by saying, therefore, 
we have to use x values between negative 7 and negative 4. And the easiest way to write that is to simply say negative 7 has to be less than x, which has to be less than negative 4. And that is the final answer. Example number four, solve the following inequality. 8x minus 5 is less than 2x minus 15, which is less than 4x minus 18. Notice we have the situation again here where the value of x on the left side is different than that on the right side. So once again, we'll take the approach that we took in example two and three, and we will split this into two separate inequalities. Specifically, 8x minus 5 has to be less than 2x minus 15, and at the same time, 2x minus 15 has to be less than 4x minus 18. Starting with the left side inequality here, we will solve for x and we'll put on the left side of that inequality. We get 8x minus 2x gives us 6x, and that's gonna be less than negative 15 plus five will give us negative 10. Dividing by six, we get that x has to be less than negative 10 over six, and you can reduce that fraction. X has to be less than negative five thirds if you divide the numerator and denominator by two. Over to the right side inequality here. Again, we'll put the x's on the left hand side. So we get two x minus four x, which gives us negative two x. And on the right, we have a negative 18, to which we will add 15, and that gives us negative three. Solving for x, and we'll divide by negative two. Keep in mind you're dividing by a negative, so you have to change the direction of the inequality to a greater than sign here. And we'll get negative three over negative two, which is just a positive number, three halves. So let's take a look at what we have for our result here. We need to use x values that are less than negative five thirds, so that's less than about negative 1.7, but at the same time, the x values have to be greater than 3 halves, which is 1.5. Take a look at the number line. Here's 0. We'll put negative 5 thirds here. It's about negative 1.7. And 3 halves, which is 1.5, we'll put here. So our results are saying that we have to use x values that are less than negative 5 thirds, not including, so it's an open circle but we also have to have x values that are greater than 3 halves, not including 3 halves. Now here's the thing, we need both of these conditions to be met. That is to say, we need x values that are both less than negative 5 thirds and also greater than 3 halves. Well, you can probably quickly see here, that's impossible. Any x values that are less than negative 5 thirds will automatically not be greater than 3 halves. So it can't be done. We cannot find any x values to satisfy both conditions, which means that the initial inequality that we were given has no solution. So we can say, therefore, no solution. And that's it.